in the previous videos we saw how we move from our linear circuit apply Fourier transform to that circuit so we can get our transformed circuit we saw how to extract the equation out of that circuit and we got this equation here now we're going to massage that equation by applying partial fraction expansions so we can have the equation ready to apply the inverse Fourier transform this is the equation I'm going to start I'm going to divide these into sections I'm going to first solve this part of the equation and then the second part and the goal is to go from this equation to where you have the poles of your equation separate from each other and we apply partial fraction expressions for that now if you want a little bit more detail about different types or different techniques of partial fraction expansion I recommend you guys to watch video 6 from the Laplace series because I'm going to accelerate a little bit this uh, part of partial fractions expansions in the Fourier domain. Alright, so let's start with that first part of our equation and the goal is to have um, this part in this format here with the two poles separate from each other so I want to find k1 and k2 so I'm going to use the cover up algorithm. So again more details about this on that video 6 in the Laplace series. If I apply the cover up algorithm, the first one, it's a real root. So all I'm doing is multiplying that by my transfer function where j omega is equal to that pole minus one over RC. So you can see that these two cancel out, substitute my j omega by that and I get minus one. For K2, which is also a real root, we apply also the cover up algorithm. Now we are multiplying my transfer function by j omega so the j omegas cancel out and I'm going to find the answer when that for that pole so j omega equal to zero so if I substitute j omega by zero I get the one all right so for that first part of the equation I got this uh, partial fraction expansion now for the second part if I multiply this part of the equation with that I get the following answer now I get pi times this function. Now you might be wondering what is this function over here? So this function is called an impulse. And if I graph this impulse in the frequency domain, it's simple, just a one spike at when the frequency is equal to zero. All the other frequencies, the signal is zero. So that means that multiplying in the frequency domain, multiplying this part with that impulse is going to give you zero for all omegas or all frequencies besides when frequency is equal to zero. So all I need to do is substitute, substitute omega by zero. So this part disappears and you get just this. And that's why you get this as an answer. All right, cool. So I plug everything together and this is the partial fraction expansion that I get out of my, of my equation. And now that we have this, this is in a good format to start going to the to the last step which is to apply the inverse Fourier transform into that equation. All right, for that we're going to use the transform pairs again and we use these when we were converting our signal from the time domain to the Fourier domain. So or the frequency domain, so we were in time and we went to frequency. Now we are in frequency and we want to go to time. All right, so this first part over here is we can apply the following transform pair so this in frequency is going to be equal to a step function so we have our step function and this part over here it's going to be an exponential function a causal exponential function all right so we get that as an answer let's plug everything together let's find the common factor here is my step function u of t and you get your final answer 